Hello, I want to thank you again for joining us on the Word of Truth. My name is Daniel, and I'll be the teacher today. Reading today will be Brother Andre. And as always, we bring you some topic from the Bible. Title of the day's lesson is Memorial of the Blowing of the Trumpets. This lesson is about one of God's high days that he says that we ought to keep, uh, that, those would be, that those that would be his servants are supposed to have a holy convocation on these days. And each one of these days that God named, uh, they have a meaning. And what we are going to do today is we're going to deal with the meaning of the memorial of the blowing of the trumpets. Now, uh, we want to begin this lesson uh, at uh, Leviticus chapter 23, because this particular high day, it is about the coming of the Lord and it is about the events that are leading up to the coming of the Lord because the Lord not just going to come, people. He said that there are certain things that must happen uh, before he comes. And one of the things that must happen, that must be the blowing of seven trumpets. And the seventh trumpet, when it sounds, that will announce the coming of the Lord. So we're going to begin, first of all, by showing you uh, this particular day and show you that uh, this is one of God's high days uh, that he says that his servants are supposed to have a holy convocation. We'll begin reading at Leviticus 23 and pick it up at verse 1, 23 and 1. Go ahead and read, brother. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which you should proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. Now the Lord is saying to Moses, Speak unto the people, and say unto them concerning the feast of the Lord. Because when you start to deal with these feast days, most people like to say they are the feast of the Jews, but God just made it very clear. Uh, that they are the feast of the Lord, and he says you ought to have a holy convocation on each one of these days. Now, we're going to just deal with the one that is in season, but first skip down and read verse 4, and then we're going to deal with this uh, uh, memorial of the blowing of the trumpets. Go ahead and read. These are the feast of the Lord, uh -huh. even holy convocations, which you should proclaim in their season. Now, he says it again. These are the feast of the Lord, holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their season, meaning that you ought to have a gathering on these days that the Lord uh, spoke of here in the 23rd chapter of Leviticus. But we're going to just deal with the uh, blowing of the trumpets because uh, uh, it is in season. Because notice when the Lord said, which ye shall proclaim in their season, because there's a season, meaning a time for each one. And we are going to deal with this blowing of the trumpets today because this is a... Uh, the one that is in season. Pick it up at verse 23. Go ahead and read. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, Now the again the Lord spake unto Moses, and he told Moses what to say unto the people. So these are not my days that Moses set up, but these are days that God set up, because he said it three times, These are the feasts of the Lord. Continue to read. In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, uh -huh. shall you have a Sabbath, Go ahead. a memorial of blowing of trumpets and holy convocation. So now it is called a Sabbath day. It is what the Bible refers to as a high Sabbath. And he said, memorial of the blowing of the trumpets, and ye shall have a holy convocation, Means, uh, meaning that you ought to have a gathering on these days. Let's go now uh, uh, to... Um, uh, John chapter 14, and we began reading at verse 1. Because, you know, this feast, as I said earlier, it is about the coming of the Lord and events that will lead up to his coming. First, I'm going to show you uh, that the Lord is going to return, people. He's going to come back uh, to this earth, even that same Jesus that walked around uh, some 2,000 years ago. Began reading at John 14 and verse 1. Go ahead and read, brother. Let not your heart be troubled. Uh -huh. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Go ahead and read. In my Father's house are many mansions. Uh -huh. If it were not so, I, I would have told you. Go ahead. I go to prepare a place for you. Uh -huh. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Uh -huh. That where I am, there you may be also. Well, Jesus just said it. He said if he go, he's going to come again. And then he did go uh, to be with his Father, and he is going to come again. Uh, and he said, where he be, that's where you're going to be. But let's go and read this a second time. Let's go this time to Acts chapter 1 
And we'll pick it up at verse 9. Acts 1 began reading at uh, verse 9. 1 and 9. That same Jesus uh, that walked around some 2,000 years ago, he is going to return. And this is what the angels uh, said to his disciples as he was ascending uh, back to the throne of the Father. Began reading at Acts 1 and verse 9. Go ahead and read. And when he had spoken these things, mm -hmm. while they beheld, he was taken up. Go ahead. And the cloud received him out of their sight. Read. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Read it. Which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye here gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come like him, so shall come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So now the angel said to his disciples, same Jesus that you saw go into heaven, that's the same Jesus you're going to see return. And he is going to return. And, and, and when the uh, angels said that to him, they was on the Mount of Olives. And if you read your Bible, you will find out that he's going to return uh, to the Mount of Olives. But now that same Jesus, he's going to return. And uh, he's not going to just return, no, any day. But there are events that will lead up to his coming. And we're going to look at uh, some of those things that will lead up to his coming. Let's go to Matthew chapter 24. And we will begin reading at verse 3, Matthew 24. And we'll pick it up at verse 3. And this is when they came and asked him, what would be the sign of his coming and of the end of the world? Because uh, as uh, he said, uh, I go to prepare a place for you. If I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. And we read where the angel said to his disciples, the same Jesus that you saw going to heaven, that is the same Jesus you will see return. So he's going to come. And so now his disciples, they would come to him in this Matthew chapter 24, and they would ask him, what would be the sign of his coming? In other words, how will we know uh, when you are about to come? Start reading at uh, verse 3, Matthew 24, verse 3. Go ahead and read. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, uh -huh. the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? So then they asked him, what would be the sign of his coming and of the end of the world? Well, he said he would come again, and the angel said, uh, to his disciples that he's going to come again. So now his disciples is asking him, what would be the sign of your coming and of the end of the world? And he went on and he began to name them signs. We don't have time to deal with them today. Uh, but we're going to read just a little bit of this. Skip down to uh, verse 21. So he is going to come. He said he would come. The angel said to the disciples he was going to come. And uh, when the disciples asked him what would be the sign of his coming and of the end of the world, he named them some signs. And we're going to find out that he's not going to come until the signs come to pass. Skip down to uh, verse 21. Go ahead and read. For then shall be great tribulation, uh -huh. such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, no ever shall be. So now there will be a great tribulation, he is saying, before his coming, because all of these events that he named, they must happen before he come. And he's going to say that uh, when we get down a little bit further. So one of the things, there must be a great tribulation, a time of trouble like there had never been before or will ever be again. Now skip down to verse 29. Go ahead and read, brother. Immediately after the tribulation of those days uh -huh. shall the sun be darkened, Go ahead. and the moon shall not give her light, Read it. and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Go ahead. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, uh -huh. and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Now he said they're going to see the Son of Man coming in the uh, clouds of heaven with power and great glory. He's talking about the tribulation like time, like a trouble, like never before or ever again. And then he said, after that, then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Go ahead and read. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. And he will send his angels, it says, with the great sound of a trumpet. So before the Lord can come, then there will be the blowing of the trumpet, it says right here. And not only will there be the blowing of a trumpet, but there, uh, there will be the blowing of seven trumpets. 
before the Lord come. We're going to go and read that in just a little bit, but go ahead, continue to read. Middle of 31. Read it. And they shall gather together his elect uh -huh. for the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Now it said, then they were gathered together his elect from the four winds from one end of the heaven even unto the other. Now he's going to let you know. Uh, that until all of these things happens, including the blowing of the trumpets, he will not come until all of these things come to pass. Go ahead, read. Now learn the parable of the fig tree. Uh -huh. When his branch is yet tender and put forth leaves, he knew of that summer is nigh. So, you know, when, when the fig tree or any tree uh, put forth his leaves, that is a sign that summer is near. And he's going to let you know so when you see all of these signs, then you will know that his coming is near. Because they ask him, what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the world? And he went on and started to name sign. We didn't bother reading them because we don't have time. But one thing we read about this great tribulation, and then we read after the tribulation, then the Son of Man is going to come in, and there will be the sound of the trumpet. Go ahead, key read, brother. So likewise, when you see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. When you see all of those signs that he named, then you will know that his coming is near, even at the door. That tell you the Lord cannot come no any day. There are certain things that must happen before the Lord can come, and we're going to find out that one of the things uh, that must happen, seven angels must sound seven trumpets. And that is what this feast people is really all about, this memorial of the blowing of the trumpets. Let's go to Revelation chapter 8. And we'll begin reading at uh, verse 1, Revelation 8. And we'll pick it up at verse 1. Now, this is about the coming of the Lord, people. This is about what must happen before the Lord can come. Because there are things that absolutely must happen before the Lord can come. And, and Paul, he even spoke of one over in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. He spoke about uh, what Jesus called the abomination of desolation that he called the man of sin sitting in the temple of God declaring himself to be God. So God cannot just, the Lord cannot just show up, people know, any day. There are things that must happen, as he said in Matthew chapter 24. When you see all of these things happen, then know that his coming is near, even at the doors. Now we are going to find out in Revelation chapter 8 here that seven trumpets must sound before the Lord can come because Jesus mentioned about the great sound of the trumpet in uh, Matthew chapter 24. Now John wrote here in Revelation uh, chapter 8 that seven angels were given seven trumpets and as each angel sounded his trumpet, some event took place. Mm -hmm. And then we'll find out when that last angel sounded the trumpet, then the Lord would make his coming. Start reading at, uh, at uh, Revelation chapter 8. And we'll begin reading at verse 1, 8 and 1. Go ahead and read. And we had opened the seventh seal. There now, was at first, back further, we didn't bother to read it because we didn't have time. Seven angels, uh, uh, with that, that was a book. And then at the book was sealed with seven seals. And as each seal was opened, something took place. And when that seventh seal was opened, then seven angels were given seven trumpets. Go ahead and read. There was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. Go ahead and read. And I saw the seven angels were still before God. Uh -huh. And to them were given seven trumpets. Now you see, I saw the seven angels. All this is leading up to the coming of the Lord. Remember, Jesus said there would be a, a great sound of a trumpet. Well, there will be seven trumpets that will be sounded before the Lord can come here. And he said, seven angels uh, which stood before God, to them were given seven trumpets. And as each angel sounded his trumpet, then something happened. Some event on this earth took place all leading up to the coming of the Lord. Skip down now to uh, verse 6. Go ahead and read. 
And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. Now he said the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. Go ahead and read. The first angel sounded, uh -huh. and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood. Go ahead. And they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of trees was burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. And then it went on to tell you about what would happen when the second angel sounded, and what would happen when the third angel, and the fourth angel, and the fifth angel, and the sixth angel sounded. Told you, we don't have time to read it, told you about the events that would take place when each one of these angels sounded his trumpet. Now, we are going to skip down uh, to the seventh trumpet because that is the trumpet that will announce the coming of the Lord. But before the Lord can come, seven angels must sound seven trumpets. Skip down now to, uh, well, let's go rather to uh, Revelation chapter 10. And we are began reading at uh, verse 1, Revelation 10, and we're going to pick it up at... Uh, Verse 1, 10 and 1. Go ahead and read, brother. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, uh -huh. clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head. Go ahead and read. And his face was as it were the fate were the sun, uh -huh. and his feet as pillar of fire. Go ahead and read. And he had in his hand a little book uh -huh. open, and he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot upon the earth. Go ahead. And cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roars, uh -huh. and when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. Skip down to, uh, skip down now to, uh, 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 verse 5. Go ahead and read, brother. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea uh -huh. and upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven uh -huh. and swear by him that liveth forever and ever. Go ahead and read. Who created heaven and the things that, that therein are uh -huh. and the earth and the things that therein are Go ahead. and the sea and the things which are therein. Go ahead and, and read. there should be time no longer. Uh -huh. But the days of the voice of the seventh angel... Well, you know, we looked at the first six. We didn't bother reading them. You know, we looked at the... At the first angel, when he sounded, it talked about the water turning to blood and all of that. Then the second angel sounded, something else happened. Third angel sounded, something else happened. Fourth, fifth, and sixth. Now we have gotten down to the seventh uh, angel that had the trumpet. And when he sounded, it said, shall be time no longer. Go ahead and read. But the days of the voice of the seventh angel. But the days of the voice of the seventh angel. Read it. When he shall begin to sound, uh -huh. the mystery of God shall be finished. The mystery of God, it says, shall be finished. Go ahead and read. As he had declared to his servants the prophets. So now it was only seven angels that sounded seven trumpets. And the first sound, the second, third. Then when he got down to the seventh, he said, shall be time no longer. For then the mysteries of God should be solved. Let's go now and look at the sounding of that seventh trumpet by that angel. Let's go now uh, to Revelations chapter 11. And we'll begin reading at uh, verse 15. 11 and 15. Go ahead and read. And the seven angels sounded. Uh -huh. And there were great voices in heaven saying, Go ahead. The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord uh -huh. and of his Christ. Go ahead and read. And he shall reign forever and ever. Now we have the coming of the Lord here. But you had six angels first to sound their trumpets that would lead up to the coming of the Lord. So the Lord didn't just show up one day. You had to have the signs that needed to be fulfilled. Because you said, you know, you hear people say it from time to time, Lord may come any day. Now, I know he cannot come no any day because there are events that must happen. One other thing, seven angels must sound seven trumpets. Now, when that seventh angel sounded his trumpet, it said that, that there would be time no longer and there would be great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. In other words, the Lord is going to come and he's going to take over all the kingdoms of this world and he's going to establish his kingdom on this earth. Go ahead, read on. Verse Continue 16. reading about the sounding of that seventh trumpet and what would happen when that angel sounded. Go ahead and read. 16. Read it. And the four and twenty elders were set before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshiped God. Go ahead. Saying, we give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, uh -huh. which art and was and art to come. Go ahead. Because thou, hast, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and has reigned. Because now you've taken to him his great power and he has reigned. The kingdoms of this world 
became the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. The Lord is going to come, people. He will establish his kingdom on this earth, and he will overthrow all of the nations of this earth. That is what he's going to do. And when is that going to happen? At the sounding of the seventh trumpet. But you had six other trumpets leading up to that because seven angels were given seven trumpets. And that is what this memorial of the blowing of the trumpets is about. It is something to remind you that the Lord is going to come at the sound of the seventh trumpet and take over all of the kingdoms of this earth and he will reign on this earth. You know, Lord, give you these days because it is a part of God's plan for the salvation of man. And when you understand about these days that he talked about in Leviticus chapter 23, then you can better understand the plan of God because God's plan is to establish his kingdom on this earth. What very solid? We end at 17. Go ahead and read. And the nations were angry, uh -huh. and their wrath has come. Go ahead. And the time of the dead that they should be judged. Now he said the nation was angry uh, that the Lord's wrath have come, and it said it would be a time of the dead uh, that they would be judged. Because when the Lord returned at the sound of that seventh trumpet, then we're going to find out as well that there will be a resurrection of the righteous dead. That's why it said a time of the dead of that they should be judged. Go ahead, continue to read. And that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets. And then he says at that time, his servants, the prophets, they will get their reward. I don't care when you died, you did not get a reward. Moses and all of the prophets and all of the rest of the prophets, when they died, they did not get their reward. They are going to get their reward at the coming of the Lord. He says, the time of the dead that they should be judged, and at that time thy servant the prophets, they would get their reward. Go ahead and read. And to the saints. And to the saints. That's when they'll get their reward. Go ahead and read. And them that fear thy name. And those that fear the Lord's name. Go ahead and read. Small and great. Uh-huh. And should have destroyed them which destroyed the earth. Now at the coming of the Lord, at the sound of that seventh trumpet, that is when the Lord is going to return and take over the kingdoms of this world. And that is the time that the righteous dead will be judged. And that is when they will get their rewards, the prophets and the saints and all of those that fear his name. All of the righteous will get their reward, people, at the same time. You know, Paul talked about it over in Hebrews chapter 11 when he talked about all those righteous men that had lived and died. But he said at that time they did not get their reward because he said they without us shall not be made perfect. And when is that time going to be? At the sound of the seventh trumpet, at the coming of the Lord. Let's go now uh, to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And we will begin reading at uh, verse 21. 1 Corinthians 15, and we'll pick it up at uh, verse 21. Because again... Here we are dealing with the coming of the Lord, and I'm going to show you when it is uh, that he is going to come. 15, and began reading at verse 21. Read it, brother. For since by man came death, uh -huh. by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Go ahead and read. For as in Adam all die, uh -huh. even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Now he says, as in Adam all die, even so in Christ will all be made alive. And he's talking here about the righteous dead. He's not talking about all of the dead, but, but all of the dead will be raised at some point. But here, he is just dealing with the righteous dead. Go ahead, key read. But every man in his own order. But now he said every man in his own order. Go ahead and read. Christ the first fruit. Now Christ, he was the first to rise from the dead. Go ahead and read. Afterwards, they that are Christ at his coming. Afterwards, those that belong to him at his coming. Not all of the dead, but those that belong to him. In other words, those that died walking in righteousness, walking in the word. So now we find out that Christ was the first fruit. Then afterwards, those that belong to him at his coming. Skip down now to uh, verse 35. Go ahead and read, bro. But some man will say, uh -huh. how the dead raised up, and with, and with what body do they come? And then Paul asked the question here. He said, Somebody's going to say how the dead raised up 
and with what body do they come? He's letting you know when the dead is raised, they're going to come with a body. But it's not the same kind of body that they died with. And he's going to explain that briefly. Uh, actually, he's going to explain it rather thoroughly. But we don't have time to read it all. But skip down to verse 42. Go ahead and read. So also is the resurrection of the dead. Now the question was asked, how the dead raise up and with what body do they come? And now he, said, he talked about the natural body, the spiritual body, the celestial body, uh, which is the heavenly body and the earthly body. But go ahead and read. It is sown in corruption. Uh -huh. It is raised in incorruption. So now he said, sown a corruptible body. You know what a corruptible body is? One that will die and decompose, go back to the dust. It is sown, go in the ground, a corruptible body, but it is raised an incorruptible body, one that will not die, one that will not decompose. Go ahead, continue read. It is sown in dishonor. Uh -huh. It is raised in glory. Go ahead and read. It is sown in weakness. Uh -huh. It is raised in power. Keep reading. It is sown a natural body. Uh -huh. It is raised a spiritual body. Go ahead and read. There is a natural body uh -huh. and there is a spiritual body. So it says sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. Uh, there's a natural body and there's a spiritual body. Man has a natural body now. But when he's raised from the dead, if he's so blessed to be raised in that first resurrection, he will be raised with a spiritual body. In other words, one that will live forever. Skip down now to uh, 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 verse 51. Go ahead and read, brother. Behold, I show you a mystery. Uh -huh. We shall not all sleep, Go but ahead. we shall all be changed. He said not all of us going to die but we all gonna be changed. Go ahead and read on. In a moment, uh -huh. in the twinkling of an eye, Go ahead. at the last trump. That's what he said, the last trump. Well, when is the last trumpet? That is the, that, that is the seventh trumpet. There ain't but seven trumpets. So the last one gotta be the seventh trumpet. And what's gonna happen at the seventh trumpet? The Lord gonna come, and he's gonna raise the righteous dead, and he will take over the kingdoms of this world. Go ahead, key read. For the trumpet shall sound, uh -huh. and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, Go ahead and, read. and we shall be changed. Read it. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, uh -huh. and this mortal must put on immortality. That's when you're going to get your eternal light, at the coming of the Lord, at the sound of the seventh trumpet. But we find out that before the Lord come and take over the kingdoms of this world and raise the righteous dead, that seven angels must sound seven trumpets. And when that seventh one sound, that announced the coming of the Lord. So now, that is what this feast of the memorial of the trumpets is about. It is to remind you that the Lord is going to come and establish his kingdom on this earth and raise the righteous dead. Thank you, people, and I really hope that you have understood this lesson. Okay, hello everybody. I want to thank you for joining us here on the Word of Truth. My name is Daniel. I'll be teaching today. And reading today will be Brother Andre. And as always, we bring you some topic from the Bible. The title of today's lesson is The Day of Atonement. This Day of Atonement, it is another one of God's high days uh, that he says that his servants are supposed to uh, keep. He named them all in Leviticus chapter 23, and we're going to get to that uh, in a little bit, but now, but first, let's, uh, uh, atonement, it means to make amends for some wrong, uh, that was done, and in order to make amends, then compensation has to be made, and we're going to show you in this lesson, uh, what wrong was done by man, period, and then we are going to show you how amends can be made, uh, for that, uh, for that wrong. Let's begin uh, in 1 John chapter 3. And we're going to read just one verse, and that will be verse 4. Because first thing we're going to do, we're going to show you the definition, God's definition of sin. Because when I talk to people, I find out that they don't really know God's definition of sin. Because if you ask the average one, they'll tell you we're smoking and drinking and dancing or something. Uh, but uh, God has a definition for sin. If he calls it sin, then it's sin. And I'm going to show you what he had written in the uh, uh, New Testament here, and, and we're going to find out uh, he had the same thing written in the Old Testament as well. So it doesn't matter what part of the Bible that you believe in, God says the same thing. So we're going to deal uh, with this Day of Atonement, and we're going to show you 
uh, what wrong man did and how compensation can be made for that wrong. Start reading at 1 John chapter 3 and began reading at verse 4. Read it, brother. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. Uh -huh. For sin is the transgression of the law. Well, there you read it for yourself. Sin is the transgression of the law. And you have people say, uh, well, we don't have to do the law anymore. Well, if you don't have a law, then you don't have sin. So it tells you right here that sin uh, is the transgression of the law. Now, let's go over to uh, Romans chapter 5, and we'll begin reading at uh, verse 12. Romans 5, uh, we're going to pick it up at verse 12 because we're going to show you that everybody is guilty of sin. Start reading at 5, chapter 5, and read verse 12. Go ahead and read, bro. Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world. Now that one man, it was Adam. By one man, sin entered into the world. Go ahead and read. And death by sin. And with sin came death. Read. And so death passed upon all men, uh -huh. for that all have sinned. So now that is the wrong. Everybody's guilty. So now, everybody, sin needs to be atoned for. Everybody said guilty. By one man sin and entered into the world, death by sin, Adam sinned, so death came up on all men, for all have sinned. I'm going to show you what it takes uh, to make the atonement. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 17. And we began reading at verse 10. You know, we read some stuff here uh, from the Old Testament, but we're going to get to the New Testament because we deal with all the Bible here, people. And if you really read with some understanding, you will find out that all of the Bible teaches one thing. Let's start reading here at Leviticus chapter 17. And we began reading at verse 10. 10 and 17. I'm going to show you what it takes uh, to make the atonement. Uh, not 10 and 17, but 17 and 10. Go ahead and read, brother. And whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel uh -huh. or of the stranger that sojourn among now, you. Now, this applies not just to Israel, but he said also uh, for the stranger as well, because what it takes for Israel, it takes for everybody else. Go ahead and read on. That eateth any manner of blood. Uh -huh. I will even set my face against that soul that eateth blood. Go ahead. And will cut him off from among his people. Read it. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, uh -huh. and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your soul. Now, he said, I've given you the blood up on the altar to make an atonement for your soul. In other words, in order for your sin to be atoned, there must be the shedding of blood. Without blood, there is no remission. You know, and, and we're going to find out that it took the blood of the animals under the old covenant, but we're going to find out as well once the animal sacrifice law in it, then after that it would still take blood, but it would be the blood of Jesus. So now he said, I've given you the blood up on the altar to make the atonement for your sins. Go ahead and read on. For it is the blood that maketh atonement for your soul, for so, the soul. So it is the blood, he says, that maketh the atonement. So in order for there to be the atonement, there must be the shedding of the blood, and I'm going to show you how it was done under the old covenant, and then we're going to show you how it was done under the new covenant. Let's begin in, Le uh, in Leviticus chapter 4, and we'll begin reading at uh, verse 1, Leviticus 4, and we'll pick it up at verse 1. Okay, brother, go ahead and read. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying. And now notice it is the Lord uh, uh, saying uh, to Moses, Speak unto the people and say unto them. Go ahead and read. If a soul sin through ignorance uh -huh. against any of the commandments of the Lord. Concerning... Ignorance means if he sin unintentionally, not willfully, but if he sins unintentionally uh, uh, against any of the commandments of the Lord, because that is what sin is. It is a transgression of the law, whether you read it from the old or whether you read it from the new. It is the transgression of the law. Go ahead, key read. Concerning things which ought not to be done uh -huh. and shall do against any of them. Go ahead and read. If the priest that is anointed do sin according to the sin of the people. Well, the priest, he was a, 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 a mortal man 
then he would sin as well. So now he said, if the priest uh, that was anointed uh, do sin according to the people. Go ahead and read. Then let him bring for his sin, which he have sinned, a young bullock without blemish, unto uh -huh. the Lord for a sin offering. Now he had to bring up the bullock, and then the, the bullock need to be slain because the blood had to be shed in order for the atonement to be made. But now we're going to just skip down here and deal with just the uh, regular people here because we are dealing with how it would be done first under the old covenant when they sacrificed animals and all of that. But let's do this, dealing with just the common man. Verse 27, read it. And if any one of the, and if any one of the common people sin through ignorance, uh -huh. while he doeth somewhat against any of the commandments of the Lord, concerning, concerning things which ought not to be done, and be guilty. While he do anything against any of the commandments of the Lord, uh, concerning things that ought not be done, mm -hmm. and be found guilty. Uh, then in order for his sins to be forgiven him, there would be certain things that he needed to do. Uh, continue reading, verse 28. Go ahead and read. Or if his sin, which he have sinned, come to his knowledge, uh -huh. then he shall bring his offering, a kid of the goats, Go ahead. a female without blemish, uh -huh. for his sins which he, which he have sinned. Read it. And he shall lay his hand upon the head of the sin offering, uh -huh. and slay the sin offering in the place of the burnt offering. Now then he had to kill the, uh, uh, had, had to kill the animal, uh, because it would become a sin offering. Go ahead, continue read. And the priest should take up the blood thereof with his finger uh -huh. and put it upon the horns of the altar of Go the ahead. burnt offering and shall pour out the blood thereof at the bottom of the altar. Read it. And he shall take away all the fat thereof as the fat is taken away from off the sacrifice of the peace offering. Uh -huh. And the priest shall burn it upon the altar for a sweet savor unto the Lord. Go ahead and read. And the priest shall make an atonement for him and it shall be forgiven him. In other words, now the blood has been shed. Now the atonement has been made because as we read, the Lord said earlier, I've given you the blood for the atonement. So in order for the atonement to be made, compensation be made, then there had to be the shedding of the blood. Under the old covenant, it was the blood of the animals that had to be shed because for the atonement, there needed to be some blood shed. Now, uh, the Lord would set up a day uh, that he would call the Day of Atonement in which all of the sins of all of the people would be atoned by one sacrifice. And it would be done on a particular day that would be called the Day of Atonement. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 23 and we'll begin reading at verse 1, 23, pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead, read. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying... Now again, the Lord is speaking unto Moses. Now the Lord is going to tell Moses about these high days, even about the one that we are dealing with today, the day of atonement. And the Lord spake unto Moses and told him to speak unto the children of Israel. Go ahead, continue to read. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord. Go ahead and read. Which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations. Uh -huh. Even these are my feasts. Now he said, speak unto them concerning the feast of the Lord. And then the Lord said, even these are his feasts. So these are not the feasts of the Jews. These are the feasts of the Lord. And one of them is the Day of Atonement. And we're going to get to that one in just a minute. Go ahead, continue to read. Verse 3. Six days shall work be done, uh -huh. but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest Go ahead. and holy convocation. Uh -huh. You should do no work therein. Go ahead. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. Keep reading. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocation, uh -huh. which you should proclaim, proclaim in their seasons. Now, even now, he said, you know, these are the feasts of the Lord. Said it three times. So it should be clear that these are not the feasts of the Jews. These are the feasts of the Lord. And the Lord said, have a holy convocation in their season. Well, the one that we are dealing with today is the Day of Atonement. Skip down uh, to verse 26, and we'll deal with that one. Go ahead and read. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Read it. Also on the tenth day of this seventh month, uh -huh. there should be a Day of Atonement. Read. It should be a holy convocation unto you, uh -huh. and you should afflict your souls. Now he said it would be a holy convocation unto you, and he said you should afflict your souls. And this afflicting souls means this is a day uh, that you ought to fast. Uh, it is the only day 
that God commands that you fast. You had an option of fasting as often as you like. But then, but he said on this day, you shall have a holy convocation and you shall afflict your souls. Go ahead and read. An offering, an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Uh -huh. And you should do no work in, this, in that same day. In other words, it is a Sabbath day, but it is what God refers to as a high Sabbath. Go ahead and read. For it is the day of atonement. For it is the day of atonement. It is a day of atonement, and we're going to find out about this day of atonement. It is a day which by one sacrifice, all of the sins of all of the people would be atoned. Go ahead and read on. To make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. Go ahead and read. For whatsoever soul it be that should not be afflicted in that same day, uh -huh. he should be cut off from among his people. Go ahead and read. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, uh -huh. the soul should, that the soul should the soul will I destroy from among his people. Go ahead and read. Ye should do no manner of work. It is a statue forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. Well, notice how long the Lord says good for. Mm -hmm. It's a uh 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 Ye shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statute forever, he says, throughout your generations in all of your dwellings. Whatever generation you find yourself in, mm -hmm. or wherever you happen to be dwelling, then the Lord said that you are supposed to keep this day of atonement. Mm -hmm. There would come a time when you would no longer sacrifice animals, but that did not do away with this day of atonement. There would, because the blood is for the atonement. Once you did not sacrifice animals anymore, it would still take blood for the atonement, but it would not be the blood of animals anymore. It would be the blood of Jesus. Go ahead, key read. 32. Read it. It should be unto you a Sabbath of rest. Now he said it will be unto you a Sabbath of Arrest. Go ahead and read on. You should afflict your soul. Read it. In the ninth day of the in the ninth day of the month at even. Uh -huh. From even unto even, you shall you celebrate your Sabbath. In other words, he says on the tenth day of the seventh month, but the tenth day of the seventh month started at the going down of the sun on the ninth yeah. day of the seventh yes, month. Sir. And it ends at the tenth day of the seventh month at the going down of the sun. So That's now right. This day of atonement, the Lord says, and he said not only should Israel do it, but the stranger as well. And he said it was to be done forever throughout all generations in all of your dwellings. Now, let's go uh, to uh, 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 Leviticus chapter 16, and we'll begin reading at uh, verse 3. And I'm going to show you what they did on that day of atonement under the old covenant, Leviticus 16, and began reading at uh, verse 3. Go ahead and read, brother. Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place uh -huh. with a young bullock for a sin offering, Go ahead. and a ram for a burnt offering. Uh -huh. He shall put on the holy linen coat, Go and ahead. he shall have the linen breeches upon his flesh. And you know, this would be done only on the day of atonement, and he's just explaining to them uh, what the high priest should do, who was Aaron, at that time, but when Aaron passed on, then whoever the high priest would be, then they should do it. It should be done like this. But go ahead, continue to read. And shall be girded with a linen girdle, uh -huh. and with the linen mitre shall he be attired. Go ahead and read. These are holy garments. Uh -huh. Therefore shall he wash in his flesh in wash his flesh in water, and so put them on. Uh -huh. And he shall take of the congregation of the children of Israel Go ahead. two kids of the goats for a sin offering, uh -huh. and one ram for a burnt offering. Well, you know, then the high priest, this is what he would do, and he would only do it on this day of atonement, and he had to go into the temple, and what when the temple was called the most holy place, and then he had to go in with the blood of the goats. You know, he had uh, two goats. One would be for the Lord and one would be uh, for the atonement. Now, skip down and pick it up because we don't have time uh, to read it all. But skip down to uh, verse 9. Go ahead and read. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon, uh, upon which the Lord's lot You know, fed. he had to cast lots and, and decide which lot would be for the Lord and which lot would be for the scapegoat. And this had a greater meaning, which we don't have time really to go into right now. And he said, Aaron shall bring the goat up on which the Lord's lot fell and offer him for a sin offering. Go ahead and read on. 
But the goat on which the lot failed to be the scapegoat uh -huh. shall, be presented, shall be presented live before the Lord to make an atonement with him. Now, he had to be presented uh, alive before the Lord to make an atonement with him. So one of these goats would be for the sin offering, and the other goat, it would be for the atonement. And this was done only on the day of atonement. Go ahead and finish that verse. Then we're going to skip. Go ahead and read. To make an atonement with him go ahead. And, and let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. Now, you know what a scapegoat is? A scapegoat is one that takes the blame for something of that somebody else did. I'm going to tell you right now, uh, and, and then if you would come out, and join us on this Day of Atonement because we keep these high days as God commanded. But if you would come out on this Day of Atonement, we will show you these two goats. They were pointing to Jesus. They was pointing to a dead Jesus and a live Jesus because Jesus had to die, but he had to be raised from the dead as well. But again, one of the goats was for a sin offering. Jesus is a sin offering, people. And the other goat was for the atonement, and we're going to find out that Jesus is the atonement as well. Skip down now uh, to uh, verse 20. Go ahead and read. And when he had made an end of reconciling the holy place uh -huh. and the tabernacle, tabernacle of the congregation Go ahead. and the altar, he shall bring the live goat. Go ahead and read. And Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat uh -huh. and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel Keep reading. and of all their transgressions and all their sins, uh -huh. putting them upon the head of the goat and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. So now one of these goats bad all of the sins of the people. You may or may not understand, but Jesus' people bad all of the sins yes, of the people. As I said, you know, these goats was really pointing to Jesus, but I'm going to show you what this Day of Atonement uh, was really all about because the, uh, there had to be the atonement made on this day. Skip down now to uh, verse 32. Go ahead and read, brother. And the priest whom ye shall anoint, and whom he shall consecrate to minister in the priest's office uh -huh. in his father's stead, Go ahead. shall make the atonement uh -huh. and shall put on the linen clothes, even the holy garments. Go ahead and read. And he shall make an atonement for the holy sanctuary. And this was done on the Day of Atonement. No other time, only on the Day of Atonement. And I'm going to show you what the atonement was really for. Go ahead and read. And he shall make an atonement for the tabernacle of the congregation uh -huh. and for the altar. And he shall make an atonement for the priests and for all the people of the congregation. Go ahead and read. And this shall be, and this shall be an everlasting statue unto now he you. Said he shall make an atonement for the priests and for all of the people of the congregation. On this day of atonement, there was one sacrifice made, and the blood of that sacrifice would atone for all of the people. On this one day, on this day of atonement, by the blood of the animal. Go ahead, continue to read. 34. Read and this should be an everlasting statue unto you. Now he said this would be an everlasting statue unto you. Go ahead and read. To make an atonement for the children of Israel for all their sins once a year. And he did as the Lord commanded Moses. Now it was done once a year on the day of atonement, and it would atone for all of the sins of all of the people. Let's go. So now the time would come when they would no longer sacrifice animals. But that would not do away with the Day of Atonement, neither would it do away with any of uh, God's other high days. Once they did not sacrifice animals anymore, then Jesus would become the Atonement. Because remember, you know, the, the, the blood of the Atonement, it was about the forgiveness of sins, as we read earlier over in Leviticus chapter 4. Now, let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 26, and we'll begin reading at verse 26. Matthew 26, and pick it up at verse 26. What we were dealing with back in Leviticus, that was about the old covenant, where Jesus would come and die, and that would end the old covenant, and it would bring in the new covenant, and I'm going to show you under this new covenant that it is about the blood of Jesus. And the blood of Jesus will become the atonement because the Lord said that it is the blood that is for the atonement. Once you didn't kill animals anymore, that was done. Now we're under the new covenant, and it is about the blood of Jesus being for the atonement. Matthew 26, and began reading at verse 26. 26 and 26. Go ahead and read, brother. 
And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it uh -huh. and break it. As they were sitting there eating, just before he would die, you know, this was on the Passover, and he would die on the Passover. They were sitting there and, and uh, keeping the Passover, and as they were keeping it, Jesus took bread and blessed it. Then he took the cup. Go ahead, read. And gave it to the disciples and said, uh -huh. Take, eat, this is my body. Go ahead. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, uh -huh. Drink ye all of it. Go ahead and read. For this is my blood of the New Testament. Now he says, This is my blood of the New Testament or of the new covenant. Under the old covenant, it was the blood of the animals. But under the new covenant, it is the blood of Jesus. And we're going to find out that that blood is for the atonement. Under the new covenant, which is what we are under today. Go ahead, key read. Which is said for many for uh -huh. the remissions of sin. That is said for many for the remission of sin. Remember, it was the blood of the animals that was for the remission of the sins under the old covenant. But under the new covenant, it is the blood of Jesus that is for remission of sins under this new covenant. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 9. And we began reading at uh, verse 22. Hebrews 9, and we'll pick it up at verse 22. We're going to read just one verse here. Okay, brother, hold on. Let me get it. Uh, Hebrews 9 and verse 22. Okay, brother, go ahead and read. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. Uh -huh. Without shedding of blood, there's no remission. And without the shedding of blood, there's no remission. It always took blood in order for there to be remission of sin. Under the old covenant, the blood of the animals. Because remember, he said, you know, you go and take your animal and kill it and all of that, and sprinkle the blood, and then the atonement is made, and then your sins are forgiven. So under the old covenant, the blood of the animals. Under the new covenant, the blood of Jesus, because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Let's go now to, uh, to uh, Hebrews chapter 10. And we began reading at uh, verse 4, 10 and 4. Go ahead and read, bro. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Well, you know, the blood of the animals, it really couldn't get it done. But it was a schoolmaster to get us ready for the real sacrifice, to get us ready for the real atonement, uh, which would be Jesus. So with that, by, by the shedding of the blood of animals, uh, that couldn't get it done. But it would take the blood of Jesus because the blood of the animals, it was merely a type. It was getting you ready for the real thing which is Jesus. Go ahead, tell us what verse you are and continue to read. Verse 5. Read it. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. Well, where, who is this he? Wherefore, he, Jesus, when he come into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared for me. In other words, he had to get a body in which would die so he could die for the sins of man and become the atonement for the sins of man. Skip down to uh, verse 10. Go ahead and read. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. By which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Again, you got to have, in order for there to be the atonement, there must be the shedding of the blood. Old covenant to animals, the animals sacrifice would end when Jesus came and died. Then it would become the blood of Jesus that would be for the atonement. Let's go to Romans chapter 5. And we began reading at uh, verse 9. Romans 5, and we'll pick it up at verse 9. Go ahead and read, brother. I'm missing that page, brother Danny. Sorry about that. Oh, my God. I'm missing that one page. Okay. Well, you can read it for mine. Okay. 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 Five and nine. Okay. Okay. Here, here we go. Right, right, right here. Go okay. ahead and read. Much more than uh -huh. being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Talking about Jesus. Go ahead and read. For if when we were enemies, we, we were justified by his blood. It said. Go ahead and read. 
For if we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Go ahead. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Go ahead, Reese. So you needed a dead Jesus and a live Jesus. Like you needed a dead goat and a live goat. Go ahead, keep reading. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh-huh. By whom now we have received the atonement. By whom now we have received the atonement. Under the old covenant, it took the blood of the animals for the atonement. Under the new covenant, it is the blood of Jesus that is for the atonement. So now you understand what this atonement is all about because you are reminded each year on this day of atonement that Jesus died to atone for our sin. Thank you for joining us, and I do hope that you have really understood this lesson, people. This is about the feast day of the Day of Atonement. Thank you again. Hello. I want to thank you again for joining us here on the Word of Truth. My name is Daniel. I'll be the teacher today. Reading today will be uh, Brother Andre. And as always, we bring you some topic from the Bible. My uh, title of today's lesson I'm trying to say is uh, The Feast of Tabernacles, Feast of End Gathering. Again, this is about uh, one of God's high days here that he says that his servants are supposed to keep or have a holy convocation on uh, in their generations. Now, this particular feast, it is about the, uh, 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 about the gathering of the people of God. Because all of God's feast days that he named in Leviticus chapter 23 has to do with some parts of God's plan uh, for the salvation of man. This is about the gathering of the people of God. Uh, it is also called the Feast of End Gathering. Feast of Tabernacles sometimes it's called. And the Feast of End Gathering, it is called as well. So now before we get into showing you what this feast is really all about, first thing we're going to show you is uh, that Jesus kept this feast. You know what I'm saying? Because people like something they read in the Old Testament, it has nothing to do uh, with Christianity. But we're going to find out it has everything to do with Christianity. Now, this one, first we're going to show you that Jesus kept uh, this Feast of the Tabernacles. John chapter 7, uh, and read verse 2, and then skip to verse 10. Go ahead and read. Now, the Jews' Feast of Tabernacles was at hand. Now, it said the Jews' Feast of Tabernacles was at hand, but we're going to find out uh, that it was really the Lord's Feast of the Tabernacles. But it is called the Jews' Feast of Tabernacles because... For a time, it was mostly just, uh, uh, just the Jews uh, that kept it. Uh, skip down to uh, verse uh, 10. Go ahead and read. But when his brethren were gone up, then when he, up, uh, then when he uh, also up unto the feast, not openly, but as it were a secret. So now you know Jesus' brother, they went up to the feast. Then Jesus went up to the feast. And I'm going to show you not only did he go up, but he also taught at the feast. Verse 14. Go ahead and read, brother. Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And then it said about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and he taught. So Jesus kept his feast. He kept the feast of the tabernacle. He kept the rest of them as well. We're not uh, dealing with that today, but I just want to show you uh, that he did keep this feast of the tabernacles. Now, let's go back to Leviticus chapter 23. And we'll begin reading at verse 1 because the Lord is going to say unto Moses to tell the people that these are his feasts. Go ahead and read 23 and 1. Read. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them uh -huh. concerning the feast of the Lord. Go ahead and read. What you should proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. Well, you know, this might be why some even call it the feast of the Jews uh, because he says, Speak unto the children of Israel. But look at what he said, concerning the feast of the Lord, even these are his feasts. So these are God's feasts. Mm -hmm. But you know, first he dealt with the nation of Israel, and then he would begin to deal uh, with all of the people. So twice he said uh, that these are the feasts of the Lord, even his feasts. Skip down to verse four, read it. These are the feasts of the Lord. Now he even says it again. Mm -hmm. These are, this is God talking. And he's telling Moses what to say unto the people. 
So if God said they are his feast, then they are his feast. Mm -hmm. And he said, these are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations. Go ahead and read. Which you said proclaim in their season. So there's a set time you were to keep these feasts. And God gave us uh, the exact time that we were supposed uh, to keep these feasts. Skip down to uh, verse 33, because we are going to deal with the one that is in season. Go ahead and read. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, Now the Lord spake unto Moses again and said, Speak unto the children of Israel. Read it. The fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles read. For, for seven days unto uh, the Lord. Now he says, Shall be the Feast of the Tabernacles. And he says, uh, uh, For seven days unto the Lord. But we're going to find out that it all came to eight days in, in, its, uh, in, in its entirety. Go ahead and read. On the first day should be a holy convocation. Now he says, on the first day, there shall be a holy convocation. Go ahead. You should do no silver work therein. Read it. Seven days shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Read. On the eighth day should be a holy convocation unto you. And then you. he says, on the eighth day, uh, that there will be a holy convocation. God, we're going to find out that you were to feast for seven days, and then on the eighth day, you will just have a holy convocation, a solemn assembly. Go ahead, continue reading. And you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Go ahead. It is a solemn assembly, and you shall, and you shall do no servile work therein. So now we have this feast of the tabernacle. We find out uh, that you will feast seven days, and on the eighth day that you would have a uh, solemn assembly. Uh, skip down to uh, verse 39. Go ahead and read. Also, in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, uh -huh. when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, Go ahead. you should keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. Read. On the first day should be a Sabbath, uh -huh. and on the eighth day should be a Sabbath. Now you say on the first day there would be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day there would be a Sabbath. But we're dealing uh, here with this feast of the tabernacle, which is God's last feast. And we're going to find out not only uh, is this feast called feast of the tabernacles, but it is also called the Feast of End Gathering as well. Let's go to Exodus chapter 23. And we began reading at uh, verse 14. This time, the Lord going to call it the Feast of the End Gathering because it is the last feast of the year. And it is dealing with the final harvest of God's people. Start reading at uh, uh, 23 and pick it up at verse 14. Go ahead and read, brother. Three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year. Now, the Lord said, three times you shall keep a feast unto him in the year. And he's going to tell you what they are. So you don't need to try and figure it out. Mm -hmm. All you need to do is just read it because he's going to name them. Go ahead and read. Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread. Now, he said, you shall keep the feast of unleavened bread. Go ahead and read. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days, uh -huh. as I commanded thee, Go ahead. in the time appointed of the month Abel. Read it. For in it thou camest out from Egypt, and none shall appear before me empty. Go ahead and read. And the feast of harvest. Now the feast of harvest, it is also called the feast of weeks, and it is also called Pentecost. So you keep the uh, feast of unleavened bread, then you keep the feast of the harvest, as it is called here. Go ahead and read. The first fruits of thy labors, uh -huh. which thou hast sown in the field. Go ahead. And the feast of end gathering. And the feast of end gathering, people. That is also the feast of tabernacles. That's why I named this lesson, or titled this lesson, rather, Feast of Tabernacles, Feast of End Gathering. Mm -hmm. Because this feast is really about the gathering of the people of God. Go ahead, finish that. Which is, which is in the end of the year. Go ahead and read. When thou hast gathered in the, the, thy laborers out of the field. Uh-huh. Three times in a year shall all the males appear before the Lord God. Now he said, you know, you would keep this feast. And he called it here the Feast of End Gathering. But we understand as well that it was also called the Feast of Tabernacles. But the end gathering, that is what this feast is really all about. It is about the gathering of the people of God. Let's go to John 11. And we're going to begin reading at verse uh, 49. Uh, and, and this priest here, this high priest, he's going to say something here. He may have been wrong about a lot of things, but at least he had this right. Let's start reading at John chapter uh, 11. 
And we'll begin reading at verse 49, John 11, and pick it up at verse 49. Okay, brother, go ahead and read. And one of them named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, uh -huh. said unto them, you know nothing at all. Now he's saying to uh, these Jews, say, you all don't know anything at all. Go ahead and read. Nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation perish not. Now he said it was necessary that one man should die for the people that the whole nation perish not. And he's going to tell the truth, and Jesus would be the one that would die for the people. Uh, but go ahead, read. And this spake he not of himself. And this he did not speak of himself. Go ahead and read. But being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. But being a high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for that nation. Go ahead and read. And not for that nation only. And not for that nation only. Go ahead and read. But that also he should gather together in one of the children of God that were scattered abroad. But now so he would gather together all of the children of God that were scattered abroad. He was right about that. Jesus would die not just for that nation only, but he would die for all of the people of God, and he would gather together all of the people of God. And that is what this feast is really all about. It is about the gathering of all of the people of God. Show you at what time he's going to gather them. Let's go to Matthew chapter 24, and we we'll began reading at verse 3, because he's going to gather them, all of the children of God, at his coming. You know the nation of Israel, they've been scattered. They have not been gathered yet. When the Lord returns, he's going to gather them. We're going to read this. And not only he's going to gather of the nation of Israel, but he's going to gather others beside those. He's going to really gather all of the children of God, as this high priest said here. Let's go now, uh, Matthew chapter 24, and I want you to begin reading at uh, verse 3. Matthew 24 and verse 3. Go ahead and read, bro. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, uh -huh. the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Go ahead. Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? You know, they was telling him about that temple that was there in Jerusalem, and Jesus said to them, uh, it would be torn down. There would not be one stone left upon another that would not be thrown down. But then they asked him what would be the sign of his coming and of the end of the world. We're going to find out uh, one of the things he's going to do when he comes is he's going to gather the people of God. Skip down now to uh, verse 29. He went on and he named them signs of his coming and of the end of the world. Then when he got down here, he spoke about the great tribulation, and he spoke about his coming, and he spoke about the gathering of the people of God. Start reading at uh, verse 29. Go ahead and read, bro. Immediately after the tribulation of those days uh -huh. shall the sun be darkened, Go ahead. and the moon shall not give her light, uh -huh. and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Now, one of the things that he had said would happen uh, before his coming, there would be a time of trouble like never before or would ever be again, and he called it the Great Tribulation. And then he says immediately after the tribulation, sun would be dark and the moon wouldn't give a light and all of that. And then the Son of Man would come. Go ahead, continue read. Verse 30. Read it. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then he said would appear a sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Key read. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Go ahead and read. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And then they will see the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And that means just what it says. Go ahead and read, but I'm going to show you now uh, that at that time, that's where he's going to gather his elect, all of the children of God from one end of the earth even unto the other. Go ahead, continue to read. And he shall send his angel with the great sound of a trumpet. Go ahead and read. And they shall gather together his elect from, from, from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. And they're going to gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end, even unto the other. That is what this feast 
of the tabernacles is about or the feast of the end gathering. It is reminding us that the Lord is going to come and he's going to gather his elect, gather his people from one end of the earth even unto the other. Let's go now to uh, Matthew chapter 23. And we'll begin reading at uh, verse 37. Matthew chapter 23. And we'll pick it up at verse 37. Israel, the nation of Israel got scattered in 70 AD. And they have not been gathered even until this very day. But Jesus is going to gather them. And when will he gather them? He will gather them at his coming. And we're going to find out as well, not only he's going to gather Israel, but he's going to gather others as well. He's going to gather his people, the elect. Let's go now uh, to uh, Matthew chapter 23, and we'll begin reading at verse 37. 23 and verse 37. Go ahead, read. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Thou that kills the prophets. Well, you know, he's talking about Israel here. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, those that killed the prophets. Go ahead and read. And stoneth them which are sent to thee. Go ahead and read. How often would I have gathered thy children together, uh -huh. even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and you would not. Now he said, how often? Jerusalem, Jerusalem, meaning Israel, the Israelite. How often I would have gathered them together, but you would not. Even as a hen gather her chickens, under her wings. Go ahead and read. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Uh-huh. For I say unto you. He said, now your house is left unto you desolate, meaning your land is left in desolation. But he's going to let them know. He's going to gather them, and he's going to let them know at what time he's going to gather them. How often he say, I would gather you, but you would not. Your house is left unto you desolate. But I'm going to gather you even as a, uh, a hen gathered for chickens. Go ahead, keep reading. For I say unto you, uh -huh. you should not see me henceforth. Go ahead. Till you shall say, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. That's when he's going to gather. At the time when they said, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. And what time is that? That is at his coming. That is when he's going to gather them. But we're going to find out. Not only will he gather Israel at that time, but he's going to gather others. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 11. And we'll begin reading at verse 10 because this is dealing with the gathering of Israel. You know, the Bible is just full of it. It's full of Israel being scattered and it's full of Israel being gathered as well because they would be scattered in 70 AD and they would not be gathered until the Lord returns. That is part of the elect that he's going to gather that we read about in Matthew chapter 24. But those that convert and start to do the things that God said for Israel to do as well, they too are a part of the elect, and at the coming of the Lord, he will gather them as well. Start reading at Isaiah uh, chapter 11, and we'll begin reading at uh, verse 10. Isaiah 11, verse 10. 10. Go ahead and read, brother. And in that day, there should be a root of Jesse, uh -huh. which shall stand for an ensign of the people. Now, this root of Jesse, this is dealing with Jesus. That's who you're dealing with here. You know, because he's the root and the offspring of Jesse, as he's the root and the offspring of David. There will be a root of Jesse. And it says that will stand for an ensign of the people. Go ahead and read. To it shall the Gentiles seek, uh -huh. and the rest and his rest shall be glory. And he said, Under it, uh, will the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. This rest that it's talking about is talking about a rest unto the people of God. Go ahead and read on. And it shall come to pass in that day uh -huh. that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people. It said at that day it will come to pass that the Lord will set his hand a second time to recover the remnant of his people. Well, when was the first time? The first time was when he brought them out of Egypt. Yes, when is the second time when he returns and gathers them again? Go ahead and read. Which shall be left from Assyria uh -huh. and from Egypt Go ahead. and from Pathros uh -huh. and from Cush 
and from Elam, and from Shinar, Go ahead. and from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. Go ahead, keep reading. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, uh -huh. and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel. Now he said he's going to set up an ensign for the nation, and then he will assemble, it says, the outcasts of Israel. Go ahead and read. And, and to gather together dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Now he's going to do that at his coming, because if we had read back uh, further up, you will find out that this was dealing with his coming, at which time he's going to gather the outcasts of Israel and the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Let's go now, and I'm going to show you. Not only will he gather Israel at that time, but he's going to gather others beside. Let's go and look at it. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 56 this time, and we'll begin reading at verse 6. Isaiah 56, and pick it up at verse 6. 56 uh, and 6. Go ahead and read. Also, the sons of the strangers, they joined themselves to the Lord to serve him. Now, he's saying the son of the stranger, meaning of people other than it. Well, skip down, read verse 3, and then we'll go and, and, and skip down to uh, 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 verse 6. Go ahead and read. Neither let the son of the stranger. They now, have, this meaning of people other than Israel. Mm -hmm. Neither let the son of the stranger. Go ahead and read. They have joined themselves to the Lord. That have joined themselves to the Lord. Go ahead and read. Speak, saying. Go ahead. The Lord have utterly separated me from his people. Uh-huh. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. Now, he says here, Don't let the son of the stranger speak, saying, That the Lord has utterly separated me from his people. Now, skip down uh, to uh, verse 6, because the Lord did not utterly separate the stranger from his people. If the stranger will do what we are about to read here. Verse 6, go ahead and read. Also, the son of the strangers, they joined themselves to the Lord uh -huh. to serve him. And now, to, the son of the stranger, that will join himself to the Lord to serve him. Go ahead and read. And to love the name of the Lord. And to love the name of the Lord. Read. To be his servant. Uh -huh. Everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it uh -huh. and take up hold of my covenant. Now, he said a stranger that he should keep the Sabbath day from polluting it and take hold of the Lord's covenant. And the Lord said, if he does that, then this is what he would do for the stranger. Go ahead and read on. Verse 7, even then will I bring to my holy mountain. And the Lord said, even them, if they do that, then I will bring them to my holy mountain. Key read. And make them joyful in my house of prayer. Go ahead and read. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar. Uh -huh. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Now he said, if the stranger would keep the Sabbath day from polluting it, keep his hand from doing any evil, take him hold of the covenant, then the Lord said, I will bring uh, him to my holy mountain, for my house will be called a house of prayer for all people. Remember, we read that when the Lord came, he would gather the outcasts of Israel. But we're going to find out that he would gather others beside. Go ahead, key read. The Lord God was gathered the outcasts of Israel, said. The Lord God that gathered the outcasts of Israel, said. What did he say? Go ahead, read. Yet I gather others to him, to him besides those that are gathered unto Yet him. Yet he said, I will gather others to him beside those that are gathered. So not only is he going to gather Israel, but he's going to gather all of the people of God. Because if the stranger will do the thing that God commanded Israel to do, then he too will be called the Lord's people. Let's go over to Zechariah chapter 2. And we began reading at uh, verse 10, Zechariah 2. And we'll pick it up at uh, verse 10, 2 and 10. Okay, brother, go ahead and read. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion. Uh -huh. For lo, I come, and I will dwell in the midst of thee, said the now Lord. Now we read about the Lord's coming. He said, I come, and I'm going to dwell in the midst of you. Sing, O daughter of Zion. Who is Zion? That's Israel. Go ahead and read. And many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day. Uh -huh. And shall be my people. And look at what it says here. And many nations will be, not just Zion, not just Israel, but he said, many nations will be joined to the Lord in that day and shall be my people. So when the Lord come and, and, and gather Israel, he's going to gather others. And he told you who it is that he would gather. He said if the stranger would keep the covenant and do the thing that pleases the Lord and would keep the Sabbath day polluting it, then I'm going to bring him 
to my holy mountain as well. Go ahead, Kiri. And I will dwell in the midst of thee, uh -huh. and thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts have sent me unto thee. Now he said, uh, uh, many people uh, shall be joined to the Lord in that day, and will be my people. But he said, I'm going to dwell in the midst of Israel. But others, he says, will be my people. So when he gathers Israel, he'll gather others as well. Let's go now uh, to uh, uh, Zechariah. Chapter 14, and we'll pick it up at uh, verse 3. Zechariah chapter 14, and we'll pick it up at verse 3. Because I'm going to let you know here uh, that even this Feast of the Tabernacles, or Feast of the End Gathering, which is really about the gathering of the people of God at the coming of the Lord. That is what it is about. And now... Uh, we're going to look at the coming of the Lord right here, and we are going to show you that when the Lord come, they will still be doing this feast of the tabernacle because the Lord said it was to be done forever throughout all generations in all of your dwellings, and that is what he meant. Uh, verse 3, go ahead and read. Then said the Lord, go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Go ahead and read. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, uh -huh. which is before Jerusalem on the east. Go ahead. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst of the in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. Go ahead. And there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall be moved toward the north, and half of it toward the south. You know, uh, the Lord left from the Mount of Olives. And as the angel said to his disciples, as he was ascending back to the Father, that that same Jesus, you will see him return in like manner. He left on the Mount of Olives, and he's coming back to the Mount of Olives. Go ahead, continue to read. Verse 5. Read it. And you shall flee to the valley of the mountains, uh -huh. for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azel. Go ahead, Yea, read. ye shall flee, like as you fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. Go ahead, and read. And the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. Now skip down to uh, verse 9. Go ahead and read, bro. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth in that day. Uh -huh. There shall be one Lord, and his name one. And then the Lord will be king over all the earth in that day, and there will be one Lord, and his name one. Now I'm going to show you about this Feast of Tabernacles, even when the Lord returned. Remember, they did it in the Old Testament, and they were still doing it in the New, because we read that Jesus kept it, and it was to be done forever, throughout all generations in all of your dwellings, it says here. Now, this is at the coming of the Lord. Pick it up at verse 16. Go ahead and read. And it shall come to pass that every one that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem. Well, said, you know, they fought against Jerusalem. We know who won that battle. Fought against Jesus, I should say, at Jerusalem. And we know who won that battle. And it shall come to pass that every one that was left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem. Go ahead and read. So even go up from year to year to worship the king. The and Lord. they had to go up year to year to worship the king. Go ahead and read. The Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts. Go ahead and read. And to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And to keep the Feast of the Tabernacles. Continue to read. And it shall be uh -huh. that whosoever will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem uh -huh. to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, go ahead. even upon them shall be no rain. Read it. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not, and come not, they have no rain. Uh -huh. There shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Go ahead and read. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all the nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. All nations are going to have to come up to keep this Feast of the Tabernacles that the Lord uh, talked about all the way back in Leviticus. And he said it should be a holy convocation and, and, uh, and, and all of your dwellings throughout every generation. So even when the Lord returned, they will still be keeping this Feast of the Tabernacles. Or it is also called the Feast of End Gathering, right which is a reminder that the Lord is going to gather all of the children of God at his coming. Thank you, people, and I really hope that you have understood this lesson. Thank you again for joining us.